Hi, thanks for joining us for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. Winter is coming and the frost will kill the summer annuals. Today, we will be replacing them with winter color. Also, most things look dead in the winter, but there are still lots of colorful birds to attract to your yard. That's just ahead on the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to the Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Joellen Diamond. Joellen is the Director of Landscape at the University of Memphis, and Debbie Bruce will be joining me later. All right, Joellen, I guess we're gonna be doing something that I love to do today. Huh? We have planting flowers, okay. but first we've got to get rid of the ones that are here to make way for the next season. And you know this is always hard this for me to hard. do, right? Well, look how beautiful they yeah, are. Look good. And huh? just, just take a moment. Okay. The coleus did wonderful. I did. Mm -hmm. the, the, but the pentas that did great last time and the vinca that did well last time are somewhere. Yeah, they, they're in, in there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but nobody cut the coleus. If we, and, and look how sparse and large they've gotten. Yeah, yeah. If somebody would have cut the coleus and kept them under control, I bet the pentas and the vinca would have done better because they would have had more light. Okay. So we're going to time to rip them out and put in the fall foliage color. So. We'll put these in the compost garden. All right. Let's go. Yeah, all right. I'll do that. Yeah, I'll let you pop those out. Yeah, there. Don't want to break them off because yeah. then it'll be harder to get up. Good thing is there's not much weeds because Ooh, it shaded the ground. I think we're going to have to call that quits. Yeah. That'll go well in the compost pile. So, what do you think about the soil? Well, we finally got a soil test. Oh, done we did on a soil this. test. Yes. How about that? <laughs> and what guess, did it reveal? Guess what? We have a pH of 7.63, mm -hmm. which it's pretty high. is a bit high. It's pretty high. So, we are going to have to add soil acidifier uh -huh. to the soil. And according to the label and recommendations from the soil test, we're not going to need a whole lot right. to raise the pH in this. So what we're going to do is lightly sprinkle soil acidifier down and incorporate it in the ground just a little bit. And then we're going to test the pH in about six months to see if we've gotten it lower. Okay. And if we still need to lower it after that, we can sprinkle it again. But we don't right. want to over put soil acidifier in. We don't want to put too much. I'd right. rather side on being not enough than too much. Yeah, so just a little bit at a time. Just a little bit at a time. Right. Uh, it takes a while for it to change the pH, several months. Yeah. So we're just going to do this gradually because think about it. It rose gradually. Yes. We've been doing this for many years. So uh, we don't want to suddenly shock the ground and make it too much acid in here for anything to live. I would agree with that. And guess how many times we've done this? Um, 17, 17 times. 17 times. That's a, that's a lot that? of planting. How about that? That's a lot yeah. of growing for this yeah. soil. Yeah, building it up. Yeah. yeah, and it's nice and organic mm -hmm. now. And you know, the product of, or, of organic matter, pH is 7. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. we're not too terribly far off from yeah. that, but that means we have nice organic soil. Yeah. But it's time to make the pH correct. Of course, when you're applying this, you got to watch the wind, okay. make sure. You don't get it too far. All right, we're just doing a little bit, right? Just, just a little bit. Okay. This nutrient availability is so important for establishing flowers and plants, which is why it's always important to get your soil tested, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. And that's all we're going to do. Wow, okay. We don't need too much. But of course, since we're planting, we are going to, and pansies, we want them they like cooler weather, which we're going to start getting here soon. Yeah. And so Hopefully. Uh, we want them to grow well. So we're going to give them a little bit of boost by putting just a little bit, just a little bit. of fertilizer on the yeah. ground. What is that too. thing your mother said about this? Yeah, feeding the chickens. Feeding the chickens. All right. Yeah. I like that, Mom. Not a feeding whole lot. The and 
just to incorporate it in the ground, we'll, we'll just mix it up just a bit. <laughs> Down the rock. Right, it sounds like hard ground. Yeah. This over here is very dry. But I don't want to incorporate it too far down because I want the soil that we have the plants in to benefit from our soil acidifier and our fertilizer. Okay. okay. Now it's uh, mulch. And why do we mulch first? We mulch first okay. because think about if you planted all these plants and then you wanted to mulch on top. See how heavy this mulch is? Oh, oh my gosh, we would be burying our plants. So okay. it's easier and let me know. to mulch first. How much you want? Let me know. Uh, yeah, this is uh, cedar mulch, and they recommend cedar mulch for around houses and stuff because it does keep some bugs away from, because it, it is cedar, it's aromatic, and sometimes bugs don't like aromatic mulches. There we go. Okay, that's good enough. Yeah. Looks good. Now we'll plant our seasonal color. So what are we planting? Well, we've got two things. Guess what we're revisiting? Oh, the Dusty Miller. The Dusty Miller, yeah. the famous yeah. Dusty Miller. Um, we'll see how long it lasts this time. Yeah. Cause you know, we have a, this was a while ago. So the pH is a little bit different. So we'll yeah. see how this reacts okay. with what our new uh, soil acidifier in here. But this is Dusty Miller, it's evergreen. It does, it's a biannual and sometimes it blooms on the second year yellow flowers mm -hmm. but right now we want it for the nice foliage color that nice it is yeah. and we have five of them okay so we will i like to see them in the center of the bed because nice if, if they do like what they did before we can leave them in the bed for the summer that looks pretty good so we can plant these okay so what are our planting tips and our planting tips are we want to plant this at the same level of the soil that is in the container. Okay. Then you look at the roots. These are nice roots, not too rooted. Don't mm. have to do much to it. That is all but nice. I take the trowel and I move the mulch away so I can see the soil. And dig a hole to plant this. It's very dry on this side of the bed. <laughs> very dry. Yeah, it's pretty wet on this side of the bed. We'll have to water this side in for sure. But again, just set it so the soil is the same level as the ground. Don't want to put too much dirt over the top. And then we take our mulch and we place it back over the top. This year we were doing something different. We've got violas. Uh, we've got two different kinds. One is a mix of colors, and the other one is a little bit different variety. This got kind of a purpley pink and white combination. And so we'll set these out first and we'll fill in with the others. All right. When you have containers like this, try not to pull the plants out. I like to, to put my fingers through them and squeeze the pots a little bit, let the plants come out by themselves. Mm -hmm. So how do you know what pattern that you're looking for? Since we have a lot of the other, I wanted to make sure I have some kind of pattern with this particular one. So I, I've decided to kind of make it a, in the center and then put the others all the way around it. And one thing about pansies that's going to be different from summer annuals these don't grow very big so you want to have the we usually plant these a little bit closer together mm -hmm. than we do summer annuals because these don't grow so much in the winter time now why don't we go ahead and plant these okay. and then we'll i just don't want to step on anything so it's easier <laughs> to plant them little bits at a time so that we don't step on them mm -hmm. good and me. again the same thing take your plant up move the mulch away Find the dirt, dig a hole, don't plant it too deep. Same level as the plant came out of the container. And then we take our mulch and we place it back over the top. 
I'm going to plant these in the front, I think, okay. next. So we'll get the front done, and then we'll finish oh. out the back of the bed. All right. Got a nice mix here. Again, thinking of our triangles. Now, we can start putting them. Oh, okay. Yeah, as you get toward this end, it definitely is dry. That's why I don't make much headway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jordan, this is the one we're looking That's for. That's the one you're looking for. That one's coming apart too. Yeah, you just kind of you just kind of have to collect. Yep. Yeah, they're not as well rooted in the kind of containers. Get in but there. just give it all the soil that's there, and it will eventually grow. Be happy. Oh, it'll be happy. All right. Mm-hmm. Right. Wow, it feels like fall. Feels like with fall. With seeing all these nice, <laughs> these violas and the dusty miller. Now yeah. the temperatures need, need to keep getting cooler. Yeah, it needs to get a little cooler. <laughs> Just a little, little bit cooler. cooler. Well, thank you, Joanna. I like welcome. when a plan comes together, don't you? Yes, it's very this nice. This is good. Thank you much. And we'll wait to see what happens. That's right. right. We're looking at the end of the season for our flowers and you see this this has some brown tips on the edge of it and this poor vinca is starting to yellow this are signs of plants in a too wet of a situation and even to these coleus you see that the the leaves are dying on them this is a sign of it being too wet we have a sprinkler head that's right here that shoots this way and makes this area a lot wetter than the rest of the bed. So this is a signs that the bed has got too much water. All right, Miss Debbie, let's talk a little bit about the kind of birds that we'll see in the winter. Okay. Well, not only, not only will we see our faithful residents like our cardinals, chickadees, hmm. tufted titmice, nuthatch, and on, but some of our winter residents are either on their way back or already here now. Okay. Birds such as your junco, many of your native sparrows, um, your sap sucker, uh -huh. the woodpecker <laughs> family, okay, and some of our winter warblers will be here. Okay. So it's a good time to start developing a refuge for your winter birds and your residents right now. Okay, yeah, we want folks to know that all the birds don't just leave. That's right. I mean, they're still hanging around. That's okay? right. Now, since they'll be hanging around, what do we need to feed them? Well, first of all, start out with a clean feeder. Okay, <laughs> it makes sense. We like to drink out of clean glasses. Sure, sure. They like to eat out of clean utensils as well. So it's a good time before winter really sets in to clean your feeders, okay. uh, clean them with a hot water solution and with some soap then rinse them with nine parts of water and one part of bleach, and that's gonna kill any of the bacteria okay. that's lingering in there. Make sure your, your hardware systems are ready to go and okay. your birdhouses are cleaned out. And then it's time to start filling up those feeders. Mm -hmm. During the, the fall, we have a quieter time at the feeders, but when winter sets in, we have a lot of activity. Okay. Birds will form their feeding flocks in numbers, if one bird finds food, everybody's going to find food. So it's safety in numbers and good to have multiple eyes to find them. So you'll have more activity at the feeders. And you want to uh, feed seed. Predominantly, seed is going to be most of your seed-eating songbirds. Okay. And birds are quite adept at finding food in nature. 
So before you even start to put your feeders out, when you're planting, think about things that are going to hold on to their fruits mm -hmm. and their berries through the, the wintry months, such as your, your crab apples and your sumac, uh, dogwoods, okay. uh, junipers, your viburnums. But it doesn't take long for all that to be depleted. Sure. So you can provide seed and loose seed and feeders, such as this cylinder feeder, or you can provide it in an open tray, which is fun because it doesn't restrict anyone then on the tray. You can provide seed such as your Niger seed mixed with crushed hearts of sunflower okay. for your finches. Okay. Uh, or you can do compressed seed cylinders like this one here or this little guy over here. I think those are so neat. Aren't those fun? Right, those fun. And the birds really like them and they're so easy to do. But what's really neat about it is the birds have to work at it. So <laughs> it keeps your bird there longer so you can enjoy watching okay. them. Another type of food that you can provide for the birds would be suet. And suet is actually rendered fat. We use beef <laughs> fat in ours. Right. And we want high <laughs> calories. But if you have trouble with squirrels, you want to go with the hot pepper. How about that? Squirrels don't like it, mammals don't like it, but your birds will love it. But you know, mm. in nature, suet doesn't grow naturally like seeds do. So one way to help the birds discover your suet feeder is frost it with peanut butter and put <laughs> just a few seeds in it and then they'll identify it as a food source pretty regularly. And the hot pepper doesn't bother the birds. The birds seem to love it. Birds seem to love it. Huh. But if huh. you are feeding the, the birds and you don't want to feed the squirrels, right. either go with the hot pepper suet, and we also have hot pepper seed cylinders that'll help. <laughs> okay. Something else you can feed to the birds would be your mealworms. Mm -hmm. Mealworms can be either fed as live or dried. And a good place to place these would be in a feeder near your bird bath. Okay. Because that way the, the birds will find them pretty, pretty regularly as well. And you might have a bowl of fruit on your counter at home you don't realize you mm -hmm. could share with the birds, and that would be apples. Okay. Cardinals love apples, red belly woodpeckers, your mockingbirds. Take an apple and slice it or half it and put it on a feeder and watch what happens okay. there. Didn't know that, okay. Yeah. All right. So what about water? Water uh -huh. is so important. You know when it's 95 degrees out, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> folks will think, oh, I need to put the water out for the birds. And they tend to forget when it's 25 degrees. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But a clean bird is a warmer bird. Okay. Plus they have to, to drink just as we do every day. You can provide water in a dish, but when it's really freezing outside, then put a de-icer in it. That's an electrical unit that's going to turn on when the water reaches below, I think it's like 40 degrees, and it'll keep the water just de-iced. It's not going to make it a hot tub, okay, but, right. <laughs> but it'll keep it thawed out because when you have frozen water everywhere and thirsty birds, you will not believe the activity you have on a bird bath with a de-icer in it. Yeah, I can see them enjoying that. They sure would. <laughs> sure. All right, now while we have a little time left, let's talk about shelter. Shelter is important. Landscape your yard for the mm. birds in mind. That's the time of year in the winter when the leaves are off the trees, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's easy to be seen by predators. So if you don't have a thicket or shrubs or that nearby for the birds to go inside when a predator comes by, whether it be a hawk mm. or maybe a cat, which shouldn't be outside to begin with, right. um, then you can make a brush pile. You're trimming those branches or find branches that have fallen on the ground, make a pile of branches. Or after Christmas, take a piece of rebar, stake it in the ground and tie your Christmas tree to it after you ah. discard it. And it'll be an area for the birds to get into. Put it near your feeder. That's a lot of fun and you'll be surprised who will use it. I think Wes is amazed by it as well. That's I, a yeah, good that's, idea. That's, yeah. Yeah. Think about that's that. Because really everybody idea. pretty much just throws them on, you know, to the curb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, wait till spring to throw it to the curb. Right, wait till spring <laughs> to do that. Okay. Wow. So again, some of those predators, hawks, and some cats, are there any other out there that people need to know about? Mm, 
As far as predators during the day would be predominantly your hawks. Just, okay. They're going to watch your bird feeder. Okay. If you have a, a morning dove sitting on here and a hawk nearby, your oh. hawk will come in and grab the morning dove. Oh, okay. And if there's somewhere shelter nearby where they can get to or where they can sit and wait for their turn at the feeder or the bath, that would help. Okay. Wow, Miss Debbie, thank you for the good information. You're we welcome. That. You're right. welcome. Uh, this is cedar mulch and it's an aromatic mulch. Uh, we've planted in the bed behind us. It's a good mulch to have because it is a natural insect repellent. Cedar repels a lot of insects. Uh, because a lot of cedar, we make cedar chests and we have cedar closets and the same thing with the chips in the bed. It repels insects naturally. Uh, sometimes we also use seed, uh, cypress in the beds too. They break down very slowly and they will stay in mulch longer in your beds and will repel insects. Therefore, because of that, a lot of bugs just don't like to be in the beds with those and so a lot of uh, pest control companies say, Use cedar mulch or cypress mulch. All right, Joellen, here's our Q&A session. You ready? I'm ready. Oh, these are some good questions we have here. All right, here's our first viewer email. What is the best way to kill poor annua? Thank you. This is Kenneth from Monterey, Tennessee, Putnam no County. Putnam. All right. Yeah. So the whole thing about poor Anna, you know this. It's a winter annual grassy weed. Yes. It is tough to control. Yes. Tough to control. I'll, you know me, I always like to talk about cultural practices. Yeah. Anytime I see poor annual or annual bluegrass, mm -hmm. there's a couple of things that come to mind. They like compact soils, mm -hmm. they like soils that are poorly drained, and they also like soils that are high in nitrogen. Oh, wow. Right. So we got to get all of that corrected before we can actually control annual bluegrass of plant, all right? Yeah. So it's a couple of different things. Pre-emergence do help, all right? Dimension is one, did the IOP here, the mm -hmm. active ingredient. Uh, anything that contains, contains pendimethylin, you know, yeah. will work. But it's already up, he wants to kill it, so. Mm -hmm. Post-emergent. Post-emergent, so yes, we gotta go with glyphosate will be one, read and follow the label on that. Or the imazoquin, uh, which is image, you know, has uh, activity yes. on pole annua. Uh, so if you're going to use any of those, read and follow the label, but I always like to go with cultural practices first. Yeah. Right, so poor drain soil, compact soils means aeration, correcting the drainage, mm -hmm. to put down too much nitrogen fertilizer. Right. Poor likes cool weather. Yeah. Right, cool weather. Winter annual grassy weed. Yeah, and it's tough. It is tough. Stuff, or you can do like you do, huh? Oh, just yeah, sit there just and just sit, and <laughs> pull it up, up and dig, dig it up because it it's easy to dig up, you know, it especially if the soil is it, moist because it, it comes up in clumps. Well, the thing <laughs> is, and it's got so many seeds uh, yeah, and it's yeah. so low. I mean, it's, it's, it just hugs the ground and still has yeah. seed heads on it. Yeah. Um, it's amazing, a little mm -hmm. weed grass. Oh, it definitely is for <laughs> sure. Yeah, if you're going to pull it out of the ground, it has, uh, you know, those uh, seed heads on them, you better get a bag and kind of cover it up. You know, mm -hmm. cover it up and drop it in the bag. If not, if you drop those seeds there, they'll be back. Yeah. All right. So there you have it, Kenneth. Then, yeah, go to your local extension office there in Putnam County. They'll help you out with that. All right. Sounds good. Here's our next via email. My boxwood shrubs have developed dead spots. What is this issue? And what can I do to save the rest of the shrubs? All right. So the old boxwood, right? So you have, you know, dying oh. leaves. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, Based on the picture, yeah. it's um, it looks like a winter injury. Yeah. I mean, boxwoods did not like this sudden cold temperature <laughs> drop that we had no. in December of this last year, of this year. So, you know, it, that's what it looks like to me. I had a boxwood hedge that had the same thing happen to it. And you could tell that where the wall was and the ones that were closer to the wall when the wind was whipping around yeah. got worse mm. than the ones that were on the other yeah. side of that. So, uh, but yeah, so what we did was I just cut the dead out. That's what I would do. And because the sun was, would get down in there and then they're starting to, to come back in the middle mm -hmm. because the, the stems got sunlight and are that's releafing out. So that's what I would do. I wouldn't dig them all up unless you just really 
have to, but right. um, I would dig I would cut the dead out and let the light and the air through it and in the spring fertilize it. I was it. gonna ask you about that. Yeah, okay. I would fertilize yeah. it in the spring mm -hmm. and just see if you can't get that uh, boxwoods to flush back out yeah, again. Get some rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. uh, see that'll help. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. I'll definitely prune out, you know, the dead. I'm thinking winter injury. That's something else that comes to mind. I think you and I talked about this earlier. Uh Volutella blight, you know, will mm -hmm. cause, you know, dead leaves, you know, as well. But the thing about volutella is it's a fungus, but you can actually see the little salmon pink spores, mm -hmm. right? And that gives you, you know, it, yeah. it gives you the identifying characteristic of that fungus, right? Yeah. So if you don't see that, then it's probably not volutella, but it is one that will cause, uh, you know, dead or dying, you know, uh, limbs and leaves and such. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think it's winter injury, prune it. Yeah. I, I just prune it. It probably won't, won't look good <laughs> once you finish pruning. Well, no, um, and ours didn't either. But yeah. I tell you, the you know, the you could see the green coming out yeah. in those bare spots. So yeah, um, it, patience. It's just yeah. just have to have a little patience. Yeah, a little patience, a little patience. And in the spring, like you said, yeah, give a little fertilizer. Give a little fertilizer and, and give a little. Get it jump started. Yeah, get okay. it going. All right, I uh, appreciate that question. Joellen, fun as always. Yes, it is. Thank you much. Thank mm -hmm. you much. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us an email or letter. The email address is familyplot at wkno.org and the mailing address is familyplot 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee 38016. Or you can go online to familyplotgarden.com. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. This is the 17th time we have planted flowers in the annual bed. See how it has evolved over the years at FamilyPlotGarden.com. You can also learn more about anything we talked about today. Be sure to join us next week for the Family Plot Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe.